Welcome to RealEnglishConversations.net, the podcast where you can study the art of real English conversations while listening to fun and interesting topics. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, RealEnglishConversations.net. I'm Curtis, and alongside me is... Amy. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. What are we going to talk about today? Okay. Well, today I thought an interesting topic might be um, talking about North America time and seasons and a little bit of information about daylight savings time. Um, so every time Curtis and I travel to another country, we do a lot of traveling in Central and South America. So when I'm traveling and people ask me where I'm from, where are you from? And I say Canada. What is the answer that we usually get, Curtis? The first reaction is usually we live in this ice no, and they, snow they say, and cold. Canada, it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, tropical regions typically have two seasons. They have the summertime, which is the dry season, and wintertime, which means more rain. But in North America we experience four different seasons. So we mm -hmm. have spring, summer, fall, and then winter. And the weather, of course, changes the further south you go or the further north oh. you go, right? So how would you describe each season in Canada here for us? We're, of course, Canada is more north of the US, so right. it's probably a little colder in the winter <laughs> <laughs> than Miami, say. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. But, or Florida. Well, it starts with spring here in Canada. And spring is uh, a season that, you know, things uh, are just starting to bloom and grow. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are starting their gardens in the spring. Because it's too cold in the winter. The The plants literally, well, plants in a garden, they die, of course, because it's cold, it's frozen. But the leaves fall off the trees in the fall. They're, the weather is too cold. The trees, it's like they hibernate for the season. They shut down. They do yeah. not grow <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the spring is the time where it seems like the whole natural aspect, you know, the trees, the grass, all of those things, they're coming to life again. Right. And the, the temperatures are, are starting to warm up a bit. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty mild. Yeah, we think it's, it's warm. Like in the springtime, if <laughs> it's like 12 degrees out, yeah. people are wearing shorts and t-shirts. Hey, it's a nice day. <laughs> but that's just because we're used to it being a lot colder through the winter. It only really happens like that, the first nice warm day. Mm -hmm. But how is summer? Summer is warm. Hot. Hot. Maybe not as hot as like, I don't know, the desert in Mexico or something. But <laughs> yeah, uh, there's more sun out. There's, uh, you know, warm heat. Yeah, we have... A warm enough summer here that it warms up the lakes. You can swim in the lakes. They're mm -hmm. very comfortable. The temperatures in our region, which is probably one of the hotter areas um, in Canada. We live in Kelowna, BC. So we have temperatures that range from 30 to 35 degrees. It's, it's really nice. It warms yeah. up the lakes. It's very lively. Everybody's outside. It's great. Not much rain. No, no. In our region, no rain, um, no humidity, no rain. The eastern side of Canada definitely has a more humid summer. It's very hot and muggy mm -hmm. and, um, you know, heat spells that drag on for weeks and weeks. Um, how is the fall time? Fall time is kind of the opposite of spring. Mm -hmm. uh, the temperatures start to drop a little more mm -hmm. and things will stop growing they tend to die off right so your garden every after the first frost comes the garden basically all of all of the plants kind of die and then um the leaves will change color they start to fall off the trees 
And by the time you get to November, there are no leaves on the trees and the grass is no longer growing. It's turning brown. Yeah. <laughs> the snow comes. Part of what I like about fall mm -hmm. is when those leaves change different colors. Yeah, it it's looks really, really cool. pretty. It's like yellow, orange, red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really See a nice lot of colors. reds. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and winter is, of course, colder. And we have snow. Um, some places of Canada more than others, of course. But in, in our region, we don't really see a whole lot of snow. Maybe two or three days a year in our city. Mm -hmm. um, but other places, um, like where Curtis used to live in Edmonton, Alberta, Oh, bone, uh, <laughs> bone chilling cold. It's really cold. And once it snows, it stays, right? Yep. Yeah. It stays. And there's quite a significant amount of snow. Mm -hmm. Lots of snow shoveling today. So mm. anyway, what um, I thought would be interesting about this. So number one, Canada is not frozen all the time. We do not live in igloos. <laughs> It's not polar bears walking around everywhere. <laughs> no, we, we have uh, very nice weather three seasons out of the year. And winter is a little bit cold, but it only lasts for three months, so it's okay. You just put on more clothes. Yeah, that's right. Um, but something else that is really different and people from tropical climates don't really think about it is the time change. So mm -hmm. what I really enjoy about traveling is that the sun rises and sets basically at the same time no matter when i'm visiting that country it doesn't matter if it's february or december the mm -hmm. sun rises around six o'clock yeah and, and then it, it sets, sets around, around six, six o'clock yeah. yeah so it's um it's good and you can tell the culture has built their lifestyle around that sort of schedule but in north america and the further north you go, the more extreme this is. Mm -hmm. So in Canada right now, it's November 11th. Um, we're halfway through fall. And the shortest day of the year known as winter solstice is on December 21st. And mm -hmm. the longest day of the year is summer solstice, which is June 21st, I believe. Yeah. Um, I might... Yeah, it's the 21st. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 21st. Yeah. I thought it might be the 22nd, but anyway, not important. Around then. <laughs> <laughs> You're close enough. Yeah. Um, so what ends up happening is the days in winter, every day that passes by, that we lose a few minutes of time each day, which makes the, the day shorter. But we also practice something called... Uh, daylight savings time right in in Canada and in the US and many other parts of the world and what this is is basically we move the clock back at one portion of the year which is the fall and then we move the clock forward back to normal time no it's normal time in the fall yeah I don't know, six months in between, we lose track of this stuff. So anyway, <laughs> the clocks go back. We say the clocks fall back one hour in the fall and they spring ahead in the spring In the spring by one hour. So fall back in the winter or the fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a tricky one. Okay, so fall back in the, the fall, fall and spring, spring forward in the spring. Spring ahead in the spring. Okay. Yeah, and this is a designated day and you know, generally word of mouth gets the, <laughs> oh, right, it's a time change this weekend. <laughs> so how, how does this impact us in the winter? Uh, in the winter, it, it can have many impacts on, on life in general, really. It can affect uh, sleeping and... Well, not, I mean, it's only one hour. It's easy right. to adjust, but I mean... For example, in the winter time, it goes from a sunset at 5.30 in the evening to, okay, we had daylight savings time. All of a sudden, the sun is setting at 4.30 in the mm -hmm. afternoon. And if you work 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night, by the time you are finished working, there's no more sun. 
So you're driving in the dark on your way home. Which is very depressing. (laughs) So not only are we having a shorter daylight uh, because of our geographical location, but there's this daylight savings time where we lose an hour at the end of the day. So I started asking myself, why on earth would they do something like this? I don't understand. Um, I hate it. I think it's I think it's dumb. But anyway, um, what it is, is way back when, way back in the day, they decided that uh, energy consumption would be lower if they shifted the clocks. And it's definitely <laughs> controversial. And I think in today's day and age with mm-hmm. a 24-hour society, I, I don't think that the impact is the same. But um, anyway, that's why. Life was different back then. And for some reason, we're still doing a time change. And some people probably like it. I don't know. It really uh, it does make you feel like there's not enough hours in the day. <laughs> but, but in the summertime, of course, we're never complaining about the lack of sunlight in the summertime. So here in Canada, uh, the sun rises at like, oh, I'd say on the longest day of the year, it's got to be like, you know, it's, it starts to become light at like 4.30. There's definitely sun by 5 mm-hmm. in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say 5. And... I think that the sun sets probably around 9.30, mm-hmm. um, but it stays, you know, that evening ambient glow until 10 o'clock sometimes. So we're experiencing pretty much full sunlight all summer long, and mm-hmm. it, it's super awesome. But that is also complement of the daylight savings time, right. adding that extra hour to the evening daylight. So if we didn't have that... The sun would set at 8.30 instead of 9.30. Yes. Right. So anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. I hope that that gives you a little bit more information about North American climate and Mm -hmm. our four seasons and how and why we do the daylight savings time thing. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. See you later. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and you'd like to see a complete listing of everything we have to offer, including conversations, English expressions, and slang, be sure to check out our website at realenglishconversations.net.